Wow. That is the quickest way I can describe the Moondrop Chew 2. I unfortunately didn't get an opportunity to check out the first version, but this one has impressed me so much, I'm convinced that for the average person, you only ever need one of these. If you're ever going to buy one IEM, these might be the ones to go for. More on the Chew 2 coming up in my review. Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas. A big thanks to me for purchasing these off of Amazon. Uh, Moondrop didn't send them out. No one sent them out. I bought them for £19 using the Amazon store. They arrived really quickly. Actually, they were arrived within a week, which is interesting because they came from China. Didn't have to pay any additional postage fees, import fees, anything like that, which was really good. So yeah, great experience if you're in the UK ordering from Amazon. What can I say about these? Well, let's start with the basics. The box that they come in is very small with sort of anime stuff to them. I'm not sure why IEM companies have anime on their stuff. I've never really been into it, so I, I don't know if there's like a weird meta thing going on, but okay, cool. You get a cable, which is pretty decent actually, much better than I was expecting for the price. And you get a little a leather pouch, which again is much better than I was expecting for the price. Most IEMs under £50 actually don't have a pouch or a case. So interesting that both accessories for these things are so decent for the price. Now the Moondrop Chu one came with a fixed cable. This thankfully has a two pin detachable cable. So you're able to use pretty much anything you want on here, which is nice. I don't know if I would spend sort of £50 on a cable for these. I mean, the sound quality is good enough and we'll get to that a bit later. But for such a cheap IEM, I'm not sure how you would balance that. The cable is really decent. It's a thin sort of silver metallic cable with a clear rubber coating. So you don't feel any texture to it, but it looks quite quite interesting it's very thin it's very lightweight there's plenty of length on it and it terminates in a three and a half millimeter single-ended right angle connector it also comes with three basic pairs of tips small medium and large silicone you don't get those really weirdly fabled spring tips which the moondrop chew original had i couldn't find anywhere that sold these and those together so i don't know i never got to experience them so i don't know what they're like but the, the ones that come with the Chew are absolutely serviceable. And now we get to the main event, the Moondrop Chew 2. I've already said that these have a nice cable and a nice pouch and they're 19 pounds, but they also are made out of metal. Wasn't expecting that. Um, I was expecting, I, I, I don't know what I was expecting to be honest, but this whole thing has seemed like a weird, am I just getting them at a crazy discount? Are they meant to be this cheap? I don't understand. They're really small. They're, they're very compact. I'll, I'll try and get some B-roll of them compared to some of the other sets that I have. The IE300s are particularly small, so I'll try and compare them to those, try and get you a better look of what it looks like in comparison. But yeah, they're very small, easy to get in my ear, fairly average nozzle length, so shouldn't be a problem for most people. And of course, since the cable is detachable, you could get one that maybe fits your ear a bit better. But I found that this cable hook really fits the compact nature of the Chew 2. It's a nice shell, it doesn't feel very heavy, still feels light despite being metal, uh, feels substantial though, and of course you can change out the tips if you want to. This meant that I was actually able to listen to these for multiple hours at a time, sort of five, six, almost going on for seven hours uh, without any fatigue, and the only reason I took them out of my ears at about six and three quarter hours is because I needed to go to bed. So, you know, I, it wasn't because they were particularly uncomfortable. Moving on to sound, these shouldn't sound as good as they do for 19 pounds these sound as good as i would expect and i am at around 70 80 maybe even 100 pounds to sound they're a fairly fun v-shaped sound with a very prominent bass and sub bass shelf meaning there's a lot of rumble and stuff that you would expect a subwoofer to really be putting out in your ear which is really cool it makes games and films and hip-hop sound really impactful and there's still plenty of treble, it's not overbearing, it's not harsh, it's quite smooth to be honest. The mid-range, uh, in the deeper mid-range is quite recessed, but the upper mid-range is fairly clear. You get a lot of resolution, like you can hear strings and fingers moving on the fretboard, you can hear just the, the slight details in voices and instruments and gunshots in games and just there's a lot going on here which I just did not expect for the money. They're clear, there's lots of bass, there's a fair amount of treble, 
it's all fairly well handled, nothing feels out of control. It's a very cohesive sounding IEM, I guess it should be with a single dynamic, it doesn't necessarily, uh, it's not particularly complicated, but I think that the way that these are tuned probably helps a lot as well. It's, it's hard to say whether they're a bright or a dark sounding IEM, they're sort of in the middle, they're fairly neutral. Of course they're more V-shaped so they're not going to be practical for any kind of mixing or mastering, but they're very fun to listen to, whether you're listening to music, films, games, anything like that. They're just a really well-rounded package and though I do find that there are some much better IEMs for my personal listening, for example I like the EW200 Simgots because I like how clear the mid-range is and how big the soundstage is, but for most people I'm not sure why you would go from the Moondrop Chu 2 to the Simgots, I just feel like the Chu 2 is so good for the money it's almost a joke to be honest. Speaking of soundstage, there is a decent amount of soundstage, decent amount of imaging, nothing feels on top of you, it doesn't sound like the final audio VR3000, just ridiculous soundstage, it doesn't feel like the OH10 really, but it, it's pretty decent, I wasn't sitting there going, whoa, this is all on top of me, I was thinking, you know what, I can pick out where that, that sound's coming from, it's, it's not, it doesn't blow you away, but for £20, I mean, it's just... It's almost like, where is the catch here? You're looking for the catch. Chris Jones's Long After You've Gone, Logic's Run It and London Grammar's Hey Now, all music that have very deep rumbles at some point in them, sounded very clear, there's a lot of resolution in the bass, and you know it's, it's a really impactful, like I said, sound. So the same goes for sort of games like Battlefield, where you're just experiencing like crazy amounts of sound going on, explosions over here, gunshots over here, voices, like all that going on, still sounds clear and cohesive and doesn't sound like it's really muddy or anything. I, yeah, you can kind of tell I'm lost for words at this point. I've been reviewing a lot of IEMs recently. I bought the Chew 2 on a whim thinking, you know, no one's going to send them to me. I'll buy them. I'll see what they're like because, you know, the Chew 1 was very, very well regarded and the Chew 2 for that kind of money, can it really do anything wrong? And I wasn't expecting it to be as good as this. Uh, you know, I know it's quite easy to look at IEM reviews and see that people get sent IEMs all the time and it's very easy for people to create an emotional response and just go, wow, these are amazing, you should buy them, to every single set. And there are some sets I've reviewed recently that I have felt maybe I've been a bit too positive on, although listening to them again you think, wow, these are really good, but the Chew 2 are just so hard to put a bad word about for the money. You know, if these were like £70 IEMs, I could maybe go, oh, the cable's not quite as good, or the pouch is a little bit, you know, could be a hard shell case or something, but for £19, which is what I paid for these, everything is just so well done, you think like, you know, if you had been th this efficient with your money, but then on like a hundred pound IM, what could that sound like? What what could that experience be? Um, and it is, yeah, it's a really, really well done IM. I don't think you should bother with the Dolce, with the Cadenza, with the Quartet, with the FD11s. Uh, you shouldn't bother with any of those. Just get the Chew 2. That's my opinion. Um, they were that good. So you can tell my recommendation is pretty substantial with this one. Links will be in the description to where you can buy these. They are affiliate links. Most of my links aren't, but the Amazon link that I'll send you to the Chew 2 are affiliate links, um, just because it's the one that I bought. So it would be nice to get a little bit of money back on it. These videos, I'll, I'll be a bit transparent with you if you're still here. They don't really make a, any money at all. <laughs> like I do this as a hobby. Uh, I've got two other jobs. So, um, but yeah, affiliate can kind of help a bit. I don't even get paid in like cash or anything, they just send me a voucher and then I go out and buy some more IEMs. So yeah, fund the uh, IEM craving with uh, with the affiliate link in the description if you want. If you don't want, it really doesn't matter to me at all. Um, I just appreciate you sticking around and watching the videos. So thanks to you for watching and thanks to my patrons for being continually supportive. Uh, links will be in the video description as always, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I've been Ryan Thomas and I'll catch you later. Cheers.